Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Wonderful. Today is Monday, and it's a day in June. I think it's June 12th. I don't think I could see it on there. I think it must be the 12th. Yes. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that this morning. I have a few things coming up. If you're in the Santa Fe area or would like to be, as I always say, because of course you would like to be, it's beautiful here. Uh, and it's tourist season. So lots of fun things to do more than usual. Uh, but if you would like to uh, be in the area or are there is a gig on Friday June 23rd that date is certain uh, I'm doing a in conversation with Melinda Snodgrass the fabulous at our new local indie bookstore out here in El Dorado there's a bookstore called purple fern books and she and I are going to be uh, doing a little event together. It was funny on I don't know last week I was out walking and my neighbor who has been there for many many years and she has an unruly German Shepherd uh, who she works very very hard to keep in line. I mean she trains dogs and stuff but this dog is just like um, she clearly loves this dog and despairs of this dog because this dog is just high energy and she said she keeps thinking the dog's going to grow out of it and it's been years now. So she kind of shouts to me from down the block so as not to um, disrupt their walk and get me too close to the dog who will then go bananas. But she said is that you doing the event at purple fern on the 23rd and I said yes and she said well I signed up to be there. So I thought that was funny. Um, So yeah I did I'm going to be doing that maybe that I said several events but I think that's the only thing that's sort of queued up for the moment. Um, oh, I think I'm hearing a kitten cry. Hold on. David says I'm hearing things clearly so um yeah so I guess I feel like I have a lot of social events it's I it's funny because I want to say that all of a sudden people are doing social events but I think it's this emerging from the pandemic uh, <laughs> that things are going back to like how they were before. So so yeah I have um, connecting with a very old friend by zoom this afternoon someone I knew back when I lived in Laramie Wyoming and having dinner oh with Melinda Snodgrass on Wednesday sort of we're trying to start doing a regular check in dinner so that's fun and on Saturday we've been invited to lunch at friend's house. Um, my friend Ed Kamara who wrote Lady Hawk and enemy mine and his wife wants to meet me and so David is coming because David is doing so much better these days and then next weekend I have that gig and we're thinking about maybe doing a neighborhood party so. I know what is this and yesterday I went and had coffee with Daryl and I know I got his name right on the Friday podcast I think it's Wellington. We're just going to say that poet laureate of Santa Fe we had coffee at downtown subscription which is a great coffee shop in Santa Fe that I had not been to before I didn't realize they had such a nice outdoor seating area and so I may need to go there more often. Uh, it's funny because they're not actually downtown. <laughs> so I don't know if they used to be in moved or what. They're right next door to Garcia Street Books which I know I've walked into before and I walked into yesterday after I was done having coffee with Daryl because you know one doesn't there, there's got to be like a universally acknowledged truth right that one doesn't walk past a bookstore without going in and I went in and um no science fiction fantasy no romance big mystery big children's no science fiction no fantasy other than children's they had Harry Potter no romance and it's like oh that's why I don't go to this bookstore. I don't know 
it just never changes well it does change I take that back it does change but it's just aggravating the places where it does not change so it was a great weekend it was restorative I had really hit tired by Saturday um, or by Friday afternoon I really did push word count last week I'm very happy with my progress uh, I did get to have a phone call uh, with my friend Susan Lee and was complaining about that I'm writing the book I'm not supposed to be writing and she's like clearly you're supposed to be writing it and I know all of you keep telling me this so I should stop saying that I know I keep saying I should stop saying that anyway I passed 20,000 words on Onira so yeah it's coming along getting those uh I'm finishing out the act one stakes so that's all getting in place yes so um yeah Saturday I really had tapped out I ended up stopping on Friday I did two hours on Friday and um just finally Dorinda was encouraging me to stop she was like you're tired and I was going very slowly on Friday and so I'm trying to respect the that fact and trying not to overtrain uh, because I do think that that's a real thing that if you you know that I can push word count but it's um I pay the price for it David and I were watching a show oh you know what we watched so people have been telling me to watch this for I think years now but it's a show called mythic quest which I'm not very familiar with the show it's about game design a game design company role playing games but if you go to season two episode six I believe it is and I think I think it was Marianne Maharaj at Wiscon who looked up the exact episode for me and she said you have to watch this and see I knew about this episode because it's about a writer of science fiction who wins the nebula award and in the episode he has an actual nebula award and and every once in a while someone brings it up because they'll ask us at Sifwa about it and say is that a real nebula award and the answer is yes it is a real nebula award it is one that was a mistake the um, award company had made an error on the engraving on the award and so we had kind of had it stuck in a closet because you know it's like they replaced it they corrected the error but you know like what do we do and the company that had made the show had contacted us and asked and this was quite a while back it was before I was president I think it was when Kat Rambo was president and they asked if we had a nebula word that they could use and we said sure or yeah we as in the royal we said sure and gave them that to use so it's very funny because they have in the show a nebula award ceremony they have the nebula award the guys carrying it around um, and I was very glad that so many people have told me that I have to watch this because I was highly entertained to watch this it was kind of like my life but in a TV show uh, yeah it was really entertaining so it, and you can watch it standalone you don't have to have watched the rest of the show because it's a flashback episode in fact the episode is called backstory backstory with an exclamation point so if I got my season and episode wrong you can figure it out by that um, and it is the backstory of one of the characters on the show um, from like back when he was a young and struggling writer so you really don't have to know anything else about the show to watch it and uh, yeah it, it was it was really entertaining and they have um, an appearance of Ursula Le Guin I mean actors playing them Isaac Asimov and I'm not sure who the can't remember who the third one is Heinlein somebody uh, might have been Heinlein but they show them like all oh, at this amazing tales magazine and at some point someone drops the information that Isaac Asimov once wrote 38,000 words in a single day and I mean this is like spoken in a TV show episode so provenance I don't know could be true 
Uh, but boy, and see my point, I did have one. That's a lot of words to write in one day. My record is a little over 10,000. I did that um, back when I still had the day job before I was writing full time and I needed to finish a book and I had like um, a long weekend and I or like maybe a, fr a Friday or a Monday off something like that and I pushed through and I wrote like over 10,000 words in one day and I paid the price for it. So there are some people who say that they don't and I I'm not going to argue with them. I mean if you don't you don't that's great good for you but I definitely pay and I have charted it and I can see where I have the rebound if I push too far. So anyway on Friday I decided well um I was going very slowly I could tell I was tapped out and during this like you've already written you know I, I wrote over like 9000 words last week not in a single day see how far the mighty have fallen uh, but it was considerably more than I had done I like uh, yeah more than I'd done since early April it was one of my best six weeks of the year so far. So yeah I just ended up taking the afternoon off to read. I've been reading those um did I talk about this already the oh I did the the feminist science fiction from the 70s really interesting to read and I came across the story that's like the only one so far that I'd read before called of mist and grass and sand by Vonda McIntyre and the reason I had read it is because it's also the first chapter in her novel dream snake and of mist and grass and sand came out in like 73 in a magazine or an anthology and then the book the no and it won a nebula award and then the novel which also won a nebula award came out in 78 which I apparently bought it at a used bookstore because there is a little penciled in one dollar written on the interior page. So and I love that book and so I actually paused in reading the short stories and reread the novel over the weekend and that was great to revisit that one of my all time favorite novels from one of my all time favorite authors and it's unfortunate that um, Ursula or Vonda McIntyre passed away in 2019 and I got to be on a panel at that year's Worldcon uh, talking about her which with some of the people who were her friends so I felt like not very qualified to be on the panel but I just got to gush about her and um, another person I never got to meet unfortunately. Um, yeah so but it was great to revisit her book which lives on and she was apparently a delightful person. So um, so yeah on Saturday I did a lot of yard work I did a lot of reading I I hung out and it was it was good I we went out to lunch we went to cowgirl and enjoyed some live music and it was all very well refilling. So we'll see how I do this week um, hoping to surpass what I did last week. That's how I do the training gradually upping what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. So um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is and, and please don't groan but it, we do have to talk about this is artificial intelligence and the use of it in creative stuff. And I've been talking about that on here some and saying how I don't feel like um, that writers have to worry about being replaced by AI because human creativity is unique and I still stand by that. Uh, there are people that are using AI to try to crank out stories. Uh, they're flooding the marketplace with it. It'll they'll probably flood Kindle Unlimited with it um, for stories that are very formulaic. We'll see how that goes but a kind of distressing thing happened in that I got uh, an email from a company that I had used to do a cover design for me and in fact I no longer have that cover because it didn't work very well so that says something but it's um to Monza and they sent out a newsletter uh, purportedly talking about AI and its effect on the community and where they stood on it but 
they didn't really address why creators are so concerned. And in this case, it's the graphic artists, it's the photographers, it's the uh, various kinds of visual artists who do work on book cover design. And the upshot of it was, was that they said, well, that for them to use AI generated art in book covers is less expensive. Of course, because you're not paying a human being to do it and that they are going to differentiate that writers can choose when they buy their book covers uh, to use one with AI generated art or not, which is good. But at the same time, they then offered a coupon for 10% off. If you would choose AI, okay, I believe was the coupon code. And this is really distressing to me because this is exactly what the artists have been worried about, right? Um, they they are being undercut in the marketplace and I do not intend to use this. Um, I don't anyway, I, you know, shout out to my amazing cover designer Raven who does everything for me now. I use a few other people from time to time as I need to, if Raven is too busy for me, but I will not use a cover artist who is using AI. Um, not to my knowledge, gosh, I hope. And this is where it gets very fuzzy for us, right? Is because we don't always know, um, how people are generating their art. But in this case, it's very, very clear. It's the, okay, if you want to pay less money, then you can say, um, that AI is okay to use to generate the art. And I'm just going to urge all of you out there who are, especially you writers, you independent authors who are paying for book covers. And I know they're expensive, but this is a, what goes around comes around kind of thing. And if you are paying someone, um, taking the deal and paying less money in order to use AI generated art and get yourself a cheaper book cover, then you cannot complain about people using, uh, language learning language models is another term for it. Uh, that's disguising the fact that it's a um, machine generated language. Uh, you can't complain about that, that being used to generate prose and stories. Uh, a friend of mine was at a workshop recently where, uh, they shared work that they were working on. That was, um, if you're on video, that was a, a grape blossom. They taste like very faintly of tart little grapes. And they, they, they're falling right now. So, um, oh yeah, she was at this workshop where they were sharing books. And one of the people in the workshop had used AI to help write their novel because English was not their first language. Um, it's going to get dicey people. It's getting murkier and murkier. And the people who are proponents of this thing want to make it murky and they're going to want to offer us deals. And this is after all how the Romans, uh, tamed the Celts, right? By building baths. That's why there's all those baths in Britain, um, giving them hot baths, spas, food. Um, that's how they got them to stop fighting and accept the yoke of Roman rule. So that's the thing is it doesn't always come in the form of nasty oppression. Sometimes it comes in the form of a 10% off coupon and an enticingly low price. So, um, I feel like I am not speaking out of school by, I mean, they sent out the newsletter saying so, um, it'll be interesting to me to see if there is pushback in the community, but this is my pushback. I feel like this is really problematic, unfortunate. So moving on, um, I'm going to go get to work. I hope that you all are feeling 
refreshed if this was your weekend and that you are ready to head into a new week of accessing your human creativity and maybe doing a little bit of socializing too. I will talk to you all on Friday. You all take care. Bye-bye.